Hello friends, David Bose here, sitting out at the bottom of the hill down here, um, just looking at the beautiful field, wind's blowing pretty good, it rained a little bit ago, but just sprinkled, and uh, yeah, we're just enjoying things out here. You know, eating some grass. Pretty good stuff, you know. And, uh, yeah, some of us are a little bored. But, uh, I'm not. Because I've got something I want to tell you guys, and I'm excited about it. And it's kind of strange that I would be excited to tell you this. You guys are screwed. Man, oh man, you have no idea how bad you're screwed. I know. I'm supposed to be uplifting and encouraging. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. If I can talk over this wind. I don't know how what bad this is gonna be. Whether you'll be able to hear me or not. We're gonna keep on keeping on here. Regardless of how bad the wind gets. Because there's nothing I can do about it. And we're going to hope that it's, uh, that the, the sound is going to be all right. Well, yeah, this video is going to be encouraging and uplifting. But uh, let's say that you're at the bottom of a well and you're stuck and you can't get out. And let's say you've been down there a week and you know that you can't last much longer. You're giving out and you've got to get out of this darn well. And you're all alone. You can't get yourself out. Well, what you need is some uplifting situation. You need to be lifted up. Okay. And that's, that's because there's a purpose here. You need to get out of the well. That's the only thing on your mind. You've got to get out of the well. And, uh, you know, somebody could come along and give you some encouragement and say... Oh, don't give up, young man. Young lady down there in the well, don't cry. We love you. Well, that's nice that people love you. Isn't it? Isn't that nice that somebody loves you? You know, sometimes we wonder, you know, I got all these people that love me. Why am I sad? Why am I... Why come I don't feel right? There's something's wrong here. But I got, you know, my family, my children. Some of us do have families. Some of us have money. You know, we can go to the store, buy groceries. We're not suffering. But we still don't feel good. See, you can tell that person down there in the well, man. You're so beautiful. Wow, look at you. Even down there in that well, you look beautiful. You're, you know, what are you doing with your uh, skin tone, man? You've been putting, you go out in the sun lately and getting some good fresh air and eating correctly because you look good. You know, that person that's in the well is going to look up at you and think, man, yeah, I got to get out of this well. I don't want you know, th this is really just discouraging me. You think you're encouraging me, but you're not. Because basically what I can see from this conversation is you don't know just how bad it's been down here. I've been down here a week and I can barely hang on. And all you want to do is talk about how my skin looks or, or, or you know, how wonderful you think I am or how much you miss me or whatever. I just want out of the darn well. And that's the only thing that's going to make me feel better. So some of us are in a well. Well, no, I take that back. Friends, we're all in a deep, deep cavern of hell. I don't care who you are. If you live in this world, you're in hell. And don't give me this baloney. That you're just so happy and so blessed. Because gravity's weighing you down. And that's that's for everybody. You know, you can't fly. You don't get to fly on this world. You gotta make a trail. You gotta beat the trail down. You gotta kill all the snakes. You gotta get rid of all the bugs. You say, well, what are they putting fluoride in the water for? They're trying to kill us? No, there's some bacteria in there that'll kill you though. And sometimes when you're out in the woods, you got to 
carry a little kit to make the water drinkable. And it's a little bit of bleach. Put that in the water, so, part, so many parts per million, and you know, you can drink the water. No, it'd be better to have pure, fresh water, of course. But you're, you're drinking stagnant, nasty, bacterial infested water. And you gotta have water. That's why they cure the, the ham with all those terrible chemicals. Because if you didn't, if you didn't do that, thousands of people would probably die of trichinosis or something every year. But they make certain, the FDA makes certain that all of that ham that goes out to you is not going to kill you. And so they have to cure it and make sure it's not going to be spoiled or doesn't have salmonella or something. So it's, it's a rough world, friends, man. I mean, you know, you might die from what you eat. Um, you know, you might be lonely for no reason at all that you can even think of. But then again, there's probably plenty of reasons why you're not happy. You got bills pressing. Um, they've just lied to us about so many things that it, when you start waking up and finding out that you can't even get the truth when you turn on the television and that they're pitting one group off of other groups and um, they're forcing us to, to live alone. They're making it difficult. The only way you can find a girlfriend these days is to go on somehow, I guess you go online and you put your name and your height and, you know, your likes and dislikes and you put a little sexy picture on there and you smile and take a little selfie, you know. It's a real ridiculous, right? The way we pose in all these kind of strange poses and put our picture up there and hope that somebody will text us back. But it's getting to the point where it's basically just uh, a pig in the poke. I mean, you don't, you know, you're going to put your yourself on one of these dating sites and people are just looking at pictures. They don't know who you are. So they say, hey, how are you? You want to go on a date? And you're like, you don't know who this person is. And, you know, you got 15 other people. They're just after one thing. And, and, uh, yeah, it just seems so meaningless. You don't know these people. They live in entirely different states. You don't want to meet somebody who lives in your town because right then and the word's going to get around that you're doing, you know, that you're meeting people. And, of course, you're going to be embarrassed. I mean, the whole system, it's impossible. I mean, it's not like it's impossible, but it might be almost impossible to find true love. You're going to be alone. You're going to, you're not, you're going to have a heartache. Right? And if you do find somebody that's your best friend, why, baby? What are you doing? Huh? <laughs> I got a best friend here. No, don't get up here. No. No, babies. I'm trying to do videos. Now they all want up here. Well, if you ever did find your best friend, I mean, wouldn't that be nice? I mean, some of us have done that, and... Uh, and that can be one of the most amazing blessings that uh, a person could uh, could have in this world. So there's, there's some good things in this world. You can have a good meal. Man, that tastes good. Right? You come home from a long day and have a glass of wine and relax and, you know, have a good conversation. There's good things in this world. But um, it's fleeting. It's fleeting. We're all in this mess together and some of us are... Or just barely hanging on. But they don't want us to be fulfilled. I mean, if we live in little... Here's the thing I want to get to. You look at this beautiful world. Everything in this world is right there. You know, it's kind of like that um, Star Trek the uh, movie that time it's uh, one of the series where Captain Kirk gets thrown on this planet along with this dinosaur looking creature and I guess these aliens these far advanced beings set the whole thing up because they wanted to see which of these two races the dinosaur or the human would be able to to win they knew that the humans were more advanced intellectually but the uh, dinosaur 
had strength. Brute strength could kill Captain Kirk with one snap of the wrist. But of course, Kirk, you know, <laughs> we know he's the smartest captain in the fleet, right? So he, he, you know, he's getting chased down by this huge brontosaurus, you know, whatever, tactile or something. And about, you know, about to die and shirt's all ripped up and he's breathing heavy and he's like, what am I going to do? Spock! You know, but he can't get through. Phaser's not working. Uh, yeah, he can't get beamed up. He's stuck. So, um, he notices uh, uh, something like a piece of, I don't remember, it's like a big piece of bamboo or some kind of a tube. And he finds gunpowder or some, basically some chemicals and stuff to make gunpowder. He finds sulfur and some charcoal and a projectile and so forth. And he makes him a little missile, so to speak. And with his intelligence, he creates this bomb, basically, and he blows up this pterodactyl creature, and he wins. And then, you know, of course, he almost dies in this struggle. But there's these aliens up there just, you know, how on the big screen watching the whole thing. <laughs> and they're sitting back eating popcorn. And they're like, who's going to win? Yay! I got my money on Captain Kirk. The other guys, no, nah, I think the pterodactyl's going to win. And, you know, it's just a big game to them. Meanwhile... Kirk could have died, you know? Let's see, I guess they had faith in him. They had faith in him. They knew he'd win. But um, it wasn't easy. It ain't easy being cheesy. So it's kind of like what's going on here. I mean, we're all just kind of trying to fend for ourselves and get through this. It's tough. In the end, you know, they know we're going to get through it, but they're making it tough for us. And uh, it's almost looks like it's an experiment. Like, let's see if these guys can go without water for a few days. <laughs> let's see if they can, you know, overcome their desire to have a mate. Or, you know, their earth is going to have all these diseases. Let's see if they can overcome all these diseases. and It'll just make them stronger, right? So it seems like the world is just... Like I said, everything on this planet's here, and if we went out there, we could um, we could find everything we need. There's berries, there's nuts, there's food everywhere. But along with all of the good food, and there's material to build a cabin. It's everything's here, put here by the gods. Everything's here. So Marion Tablet says they brought sheep down here, so we'd have sheep. We get wool. They brought cannabis so we could he heal our bodies. And of course, now they've taken that away from us for a long period of time because they were trying to drive us insane with their medications, I guess. But, um, you yeah, know, I don't know. One, one experiment after another, I guess. Uh, for a long time, they wanted us to breed, but now they don't want us to breed because there's an overpopulation, I guess. So they're trying to make us all, you know, live in little apartments with our doors barred, you know, with iron and uh, 15 locks and you know you got to go to the speaker to hear who's at the front door and if they're a pizza guy we can let them in you know of course sometimes they're not the pizza guy and you know bad things happen but um but we're living inside of barred doors we're scared out of our mind we're watching things through a hologram so no, we're no longer really gonna live lives it's like we're, we've reached this pinnacle where we've gone through all these lives and we're far enough advanced that now we're going through the last course. It's kind of like a sit-down course where we sit in front of a television and we watch all these various different kinds of lives that are fantasies. Uh, you know, uh, we watch E.T. movies and sky-fi what-ifs and whodunits and thrillers and all these you know, shows like the Black Mirror, just crazy, crazy fantasies and like almost like as if we live a thousand lives sitting in front of our television on the sofa, experiencing love, not real love. It's like they don't want us to have anything real right now. We're more or less just experiencing all these different emotions. Like we're on a doctor's gurney and, and they're, they've got needles in us and they're trying to see if, um, will respond to that emotion 
let's kill somebody right in front of him, but it's on screen, but it'll be like it's real. Our blood pressure will rise, you know. The doctor's got the stethoscope and he's checking us out and you know and yeah we're we're about to lose our minds we'll put some drugs see if that works and they're experimenting on us just like when they first came here and i guess they spliced some genes together and made this little thing called you know the human species right which is basically the same as the niberian species but slightly different and then they had some trouble and you know so it's been a long long experiment and I think it's like closing, winding down because of the way the population has increased in the last hundred years, the world wars, the, uh, the fact that we can now kill ourselves many times over with nuclear weapons and chemicals and biological weapons now. And they're using it on us. I mean, these vaccines, you know, what are they? We don't know. Why are there all these epidemics in Africa, right? In these countries, they go and they vaccinate them and then 10 years later, they all come down with HIV or Ebola or something. And then they make these, before they even, this thing spreads, they've already got a patent on it, right? They, they created it in a test tube and then somehow or another it starts spreading malaria or is that, did, did we invent that? Is that some, come on, if human beings brought sheep so that, I mean, if these aliens brought sheep and they brought um, cannabis and they brought certain things to this world, kind of like when you when you're a, somebody who goes from place to place, uh, like a vagabond. You know, you put your wagon together, you hitch up your horses, and you the sheep walk behind you, and the dogs, you know, kind of herd them along and Inside the wagon, you got all your clothes and your beans and your your salt and your flour and things and your pans and pots and, you know, pictures and memorabilia you take with you. And you go to another place down the road and you set up camp. But you bring your stuff with you because you don't want, you can't live without the seeds. So you can plant them in, in wherever you go. You got to plant a garden. So you bring the tomato seeds and the potato seeds and the the zucchini and the onions and you bring the sheep and the dog and the chickens because what would you do without the chickens so you bring that with you maybe horses camels you know this like we talked about the scythians and and the the um mongolians and the all these different cultures that used horses they depended on them and and they had to build a place to live quick so they learned how to build teepees and huts as much like they all kind of did the same thing it it was common knowledge how to just how to survive it was handed down this information well now we're lost but you see it's all out there we could we could live in this world just beautifully and we'd probably i mean if you had a little community then nature would provide that you'd have children there'd be a boy and there'd be a girl and there'd be a little boy and there'd be a girl so there'd be about half girls half boys they'd all pair off we'd all have mates we wouldn't be sitting around being perverted with all kinds of weird concepts and thoughts on television that just kind of like drugs that drain our bodies and our emotions and our willpower and you know we're put into a position where there's not much all you can do is go to work every day and come home you sort of burn out and you want to just drum out with drugs and caffeine and you know, whatever these Dayquil or whatever you can get a hold of. Just so, you know, somehow or another you can go to sleep and, you know, get up and do it again because you got to do it for your children. But you're not happy. But you see, that's not the way it was supposed to be. I'm not saying it was easy. The whole world's been an experiment from the beginning. But originally, they put it all out there for us. You could find berries and nuts and you could go hunting and you know you build yourself a teepee like the Scythians and when all the wildlife was kind of taken out in that area you moved on to another area or maybe the water dried up or the season changed you moved on where there was greener pastures and you frolicked in the daisies and the you know the fields and you were happy but yeah there was always the possibility that you'd go over that next knoll and get to a river where there was these things called ticks and mosquitoes and 
bugs of all kinds, scorpions and snakes. You'd get bit and die. And, uh, you know, therefore we had songs like Darcy Farrow, where the river runs down through the Carson Valley Plain. You know, sad song. Some guy loved his girl so much, you know, they wrote a song. And this, this, you know, there was all, they wrote songs like this all the way back. I mean, there was these stories, these, these romance stories that goes back to King David. And, and this goes all the way back to the Sumerian tablets. These stories about how their struggles between brothers, even between nations, there's wars, there's battles, and we fight them, and we're, we're trying to get through, but it was a lot easier. All you had to worry about was fighting the elements, the physical elements, but at least you were in a little village, and the natural order prevailed. You paired off with one of the individuals there. You grew up with these people. You became best friends. You didn't marry some strange woman that was on the Internet, but you married your best friend, okay? And you guys built, with your bare hands, your own cabin and you built you know the lean-to and you you wove the baskets and you hunted together and you know planted and it meant something to you that house you know it wasn't something a mortgage from the bank that you could just you know go out and waste and throw it away and then go out and get another mortgage and declare bankruptcy or whatever. But no, this was your sweat, blood, and tears. You went out there and you did it for your children. You worked so hard and when you were done, you were so proud because you had this beautiful balcony and up over the balcony, you had these big elk horns. You, know, you shot that yourself, right? You fed your family. You were a man. And uh, you had these beautiful children. And, and they were happy and you were so proud of yourself that you kept them alive through the winter. Yeah, it was tough, but you know, there was so much glory involved, right? Riding bareback on a horse, hunting down a buffalo. And that, you know, those are memories you're not going to get back. Uh, man, that's, you know, we don't get that. The closest thing we got today is getting in the back of a Jeep, you know, and going out uh, mudding or something, right? That's fun. Take the top down and get a little mud in your face, right? If you get stung by a bee or a snake, you go to the doctor and it's all one day and you're back to work. Back to that rum drum of work and ugh, depressing and pretty soon you're back on medications or whiskey, right? Or you're smoking because what's the point? You know, if you don't smoke and you don't do whiskey, what? You live 60 years, you do whiskey and you smoke, what do you do? 70 years now, 80? The most, yeah, you know, I can almost see why you you do the whiskey. Let's get off this stupid high horse, this propaganda that some people are evil. How dare they? Just a bunch of gluttons. Well, you're all a bunch of gluttons. We all are. We were bred to breed. We were thrown down here in an environment. And um, from the time immemorable, we had our masters cracking the whip. It was never ours, unless you were somehow able to overcome the propaganda and get yourself out of Egypt, right? <laughs> or get yourself out of Babylon over the over the 30-foot wall through the woods and over the creek and beyond the hills where you could go, you and your wife could go find a, a new life and maybe... Maybe it was cold. Maybe you had to go all the way to Siberia to, to get freedom, right? Where there weren't any soldiers or armies. You could find a little place there where you could be free, right? And you weren't... Well, but, you know, sometimes that was worse than being a slave because you're out there by yourself. The winters are hard. So it, it's always been a bunch of choices. And it's choices now. But somehow or another, we're just like most people in those days lived in those walls, behind those walls in Babylon or over there in Assyria in those city states, you know, Akkad and Jerusalem or somewhere. 
they had to live within the city gates and go by the religion of the people and worship the gods that you were told to worship and you know and keep the laws whether it was the law of Moses or the law of Hammurabi it was still you know uh, two camels and some myrrh and some frankincense would buy you one slave girl that it was the same garbage right it was the same if you were had a good pedigree and you could get yourself in in the army and you could get through a couple of years of not dying perhaps you could be a commander and not get yourself killed and start living a little higher on the hog and right you know you thought you were getting somewhere well you weren't all you were was a higher grunt that's the way this world's been but the only way to get away from that was to climb the fence and take your girl and you had to convince her because she's probably going to say no nah, i'm going to stay here where there's food right they're giving us uh bags of white flour this is good stuff yeah but it kills you and you get cancer yeah but they didn't know that so they kept taking the tobacco leaves and rolling them and they can smoke and drinking the whiskey and you know in 1800 the 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 most the biggest uh import was gin right here in America and tobacco and white flour and sugar and all stuff was killing people they didn't know it heroin whatever so yeah just look at the during the 1800s people wanted to make a good life for themselves so they got a mule and a horse and a wagon and they took their girl and they got in the back of the wagon and they they went west young man and they thought maybe we'll find some gold there was good times in history. People went west and they found some gold. And they got rich. Uh-oh, that's when the trouble started. Then they, they thought, well, we got enough money to buy ourselves a saloon, babe. Oh, look at this. We're going to be rich. You buy yourself a whole bunch of bonnets, you know. And uh, we'll have ourselves a big old house with maybe three stories. Three bathrooms. Well, yeah. Wasn't really running water, but if you call gravity-fed water system luxurious but you had you know a three-story beautiful victorian home that your slaves built for you and you had some people come out and work the fields and the cotton fields and you became the husbandman of the manor and and yeah you were doing good only problem is is now yeah you thought you were somebody and you started cheating on the mistress and she left you and then she you know it, it didn't yeah no it didn't turn out good it was a lot of trouble somebody died in that scenario probably a, a murder or a, or some heartache or somebody went to the hospital or something it wasn't a good outcome and it never is and so here we are in a beautiful grassy field with flowers beautiful oaks and elms and wonderful wonderful scenery and life is is better right because you got a coffee maker now you don't have to go out and grind it you know and it comes in a package you just pour it in a pot and push a button and psh, you got coffee wakes you up at nine right with the alarm you got this beautiful car you love your car right it's better than a horse right that thing will go over rocks and through a crick right better than the horse would probably so we're doing pretty good right but there's still all this heartache still all this pain we're still dying what's the answer well I believe that there's a reason for the snakes and all of the troubles that we've got here and um, it, you know it, imagine what we could do well what was it that that God of the Bible was was so worried about there in the garden he said Adam and Eve don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because in the day you eat from it you'll die well then they did eat from it and they didn't die but their eyes became opened, it says. It says that in the text, right in the Bible. Their eyes became open, and they knew they were naked. They understood things they didn't know before. And they became like God, knowing good and evil. 
and pre-adventure that they put forth their hand and eat from the tree of light also and live forever. See, it was possible. Except for, but for, the God who said no and ran him out of the garden and cursed the ground and cursed the serpent. He put thorns and thistles on everything and it says it wouldn't grow anything for him. And they'd have to till the soil by the sweat of their face. And woman, you're going to start having children in pain and you're going to labor and have give birth and it's not going to be great you know having those kids you're going to be burdened with giving birth to these babies and packing them around and yeah it ain't going to be fun you're going to have to be a slave to your husband and do everything he says and i'm going to make some laws and you better keep them but you can't keep them you know you're all going to die because i'm angry i am the god of vengeance i shall repay saith that lord that lord that god jesus said your father's the devil a slanderer and a liar and a murderer but you see, have you ever thought about this? When that God came along and said, now don't make a tower because pre-adventure they make a tower and they reach God and there's no telling what they could do. There's nothing that would be impossible for them if I let them build that tower. So, This God scatters them all over the face of the earth, scatters their language, takes away their knowledge. He doesn't want them to have knowledge because he doesn't, because he, he knows what we could do if we, if we could just be at peace and he'd leave us alone. So I believe that the world's got all the things we need to make a beautiful paradise. You imagine what would happen if we today took all these trillions of dollars that we're spending on weapons of war. Oh, and there's a thousand other programs and things that they're wasting all of our money on. It's going into the pockets of these fat cats. But you imagine if we took all of those trillions of dollars and um, we just brought our armies home, disbanded the armies and had peace. Why, even if we just took half of the money home and started, you know how we have all these parks in the country and, oh, I, I noticed that every country's got these big parks, just China and Brazil and Russia, they have these state government parks. I guess the United States started this, but they allocate a bunch of area and they say it's going to be a park. What do they do? They, they got rangers there and they... They got garbage pails where you could put your garbage. There's lodges and places to sleep. And there's little wooden fence walkways to go look at the waterfalls and the, the hot springs and the, the cliffs and the mountains. So they spend a lot of money making roads and making it access accessible and beautifying it and trimming the grass along the highways. They plant in the, in the road, in the middle of the road, on the sides of the roads, they plant little trees and flowers. But they never put fruit trees. They don't grow cannabis there so that we could have some free, you know, healing herbs. They don't plant apple trees. They never plant apple trees. Why? Because if people had food, they wouldn't need to go and be slaves and work. You could... You could turn this earth into a paradise. We just get together and all of us could go down and plant some plums and some peaches and some pears or some coconuts and some bananas, depending on where you live. And uh, boy, oh boy, you know, we'd have parks. We'd have, we could stock the, the, the rivers with fish. We could all go out and sit at the bank of the river and fish. We'd have food. We could help each other build our little villages and our little camps and we wouldn't spend all this money on war and, and we wouldn't be sick because we would be, well, we've got the cannabis, we've got the, the good food, happiness, you know, we'd live much longer and much healthier to see the third and the fourth generation. We'd live in peace. There wouldn't be any war because we've already disbanded the war and what would be the benefit? 
all nations would agree to it because the benefit is that every nation would have food. That's what everybody wants. The people, we don't want war. We just want to eat. We want to have family. We want our family healthy. Nobody ever wanted war. All we ever wanted was for our family to be safe. But they lied to us. Inky said, tear down that tower. Don't let them reach that kind of knowledge where they could be immortal and have peace and get a hold of that cannabis, which is only for the high priest in the tent. You know, he's going to act like a prophet and he's going to tell the people what to do. So, you know, we got all these Uncle Toms and these uh, people that are not on our side. They're just out there trying to deceive us, propaganda, and convince us to vote for more government bureaucracy. Welfare means they control us. We get the food from them. They give us food, and they give us the kind of food they want. It could be poison. It could be... It makes us sick. You're right. We got to go to the trough to eat instead of being a, an animal that grazes freely, which is what we are. We should be out here. And if we planted gardens, we could also start putting our technology to work and getting rid of snakes and uh, malaria ridden mosquitoes and we could get rid of poisonous plants and things like that. We could weed the garden, get rid of the weeds. Jesus said, got to get rid of the weeds. Got to wait till the harvest though, but we got to get rid of the weeds. They're no good. We burn them outside in the fire. So, you know, you trim your trees so they grow better. So this garden needs to be kept up. We've got to have a hedge around the garden. And we got to, that's what's wrong with the world. It's wild. There's thorns and thistles. It's gone to seed. Because why? Because we're not allowed to live. We're only allowed to build up a wall around a big city and get inside and uh, have this king provide us with the food that he decides, which is a big thing called white flour. And he gives us a big thing, a thing called tobacco and he, big bags of beans and, and this food. It's all dried up. It's not real fresh or anything, right? There, you know, we can't have that cannabis that they're smoking in the tent down there with the priest and the king. But we could, you know, we can have this little white flour that makes a little cake. We make a little patty cake and throw it on the fire and burn it. And then we get to swallow that. Right? doesn't make for a very healthy life. We're not happy. We, you know, they're giving us whiskey to put us to sleep so we don't get knowledge. So we don't figure out that this world's our world and we can take it back. But we've got to get outside of the rules of this government. These walls that they've built up around us. We need to live it together in peace and put our resources together. Do you realize that Norway is a socialist, basically a socialist type government. And they have plenty of money. And do you know why? It's not because socialism's better. It's because they control the oil production in that country and they all get a portion of the money that's coming from the oil. Do you realize that we're not in a free society, a capitalistic free society where people have the, the freedom to sell and buy and you know, without a permit and a license, they just trade? No, this is a corporate free market. In other words, you can't, do it for free but the oil companies and the electric companies and the google and uh, uh you know the hospitals the pharmacies and these guys they have the freedom to sell you oil and um electricity but those things are our resources they're ra they're robbing the ground and sucking it up out of the ground and raping the environment you know you see these very important people in hollywood saying oh we need the world's going to die in 12 years we got to do something that's going to cost billions of dollars where's what they need to do we could solve all the world's problems and here's what we need to do all of us need to start talking about this exactly the same basic way get it out there on youtube inform everybody that this is it this is the solution not socialism or capitalism true capitalism is true free trade. And socialism just means that we're all a big family. But 
you know, I don't want any kind of government. I want freedom. But here's what we do. The resources of the ground, the electricity in the air and the water, and the phone and, and all these things that don't belong to any one person, right? The community, uh, the community uh, billboard, which is uh, YouTube and, and Facebook, where we post our, our what we're doing, and, and you know it's like a, a market. That should be free, a free market. Anybody should be able to post what they want on Facebook and talk to their friends and and communicate and buy and sell. And that should, the, those, those are the public's resources and the oil. It shouldn't be Mr. Rockefeller or Rothschild or, or, or you know, J.P. Morgan or anybody else that owns these precious resources like gold and silver and electricity and light and energy and all of these things. Now, if those companies, I know you're going to say it's socialism, but no. I'm saying free trade. Anything you buy, you weave a basket... It's yours. You don't have to get a permit. You can sell that basket. You can give it to somebody, trade them for a rock that they made, or they want to come help you build your house, and you go help them design their car or whatever. That's free trade. But the oil is the resources of all people. The land, the oil, the electricity. That belongs to all of us. And the trillions and trillions of dollars that they're making off the oil, the pharmaceuticals, and all of these things, the banking system, it should be not owned by the Rockefellers. It should be owned by the people. So if we the people owned those resources, we'd be so wealthy, like they are in Norway and Canada, they get a check from the oil. Even in Alaska, people that live in Alaska get a check. As long as they are residents, they get a, a check from the, from the money they're making off the oil. But see, they're not doing that in Texas. They're not doing that in the rest of the United States. So the oil profits are going into ExxonMobil or whoever owns these companies. The That money, like... Mr. Uh, Amazon, I don't remember what his name is right now, the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, and, um, you know, the guy that owns Facebook and the guys that own Yahoo and the people that own the electric companies and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the, the J.P. Morgans and the banking system and all this should be not owned by one family, but it should be owned by us and the resources belong to us and the wealth would be for us the rest of it's free trade weave your baskets and build your homes and fix your cars and your labor is something that belongs to you but all the profits that come from the resources of the world should be the people's and then we would no longer need to go to war and we'd make these paradises these parks and we'd grow fruit vegetables and plants and we'd all get together and help each other and we'd live free and we'd get rid the world of all these snakes and all these we'd really start trying to find a cure for disease which you know huh, I could do a video on that it's not what you think but we would be healthy let's put it that way the only reason we're sick is because they're trying to make us sick the only reason that we're dying and we're depressed is because they're trying to put us in a situation where we, we're going to be depressed and we can't overcome because they don't want us to wake up and realize that we could have paradise on earth. We could become like God and be immortal, knowing good and evil for ourselves. So that's what we should be doing. We should be getting that message out to the world and we should be working on it pronto before it's too late, friends. Instead of all this propaganda, where, oh, we're all fighting about whether or not, you know, you should build some kind of a wall or whether we should, uh, guys should be able to make themselves into girls or whether men could go into little girls' bathrooms or all these debates about whether somebody should go to jail because they talked to the Russians or, look, we're wasting our time, all right? I don't believe in jails. Let's stop it. Let's stop putting people in little cages. We don't even do that to dogs. We wouldn't. Nobody would be interested in hurting anyone if we could get rid of the incentive to sell the drugs to hurt people. Just make herbs free. Just make trade truly free where you can live free and truly have a good life. Then there's no incentive to do bad. See, they want 
us to do bad. They want to control us and to have prisons and laws and they want to base everything on fear and on trade and capitalism. But they get, they're the ones who get to sell us everything and we're the ones that get to, to work for it. So anyway, this is David Vos. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good one.